Hey there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. This week, we're going to concentrate on villains and nemesises and kryptonite. So, let me give you some examples. Uh, the cartoon world. Wiley Coyote could never beat the Roadrunner. How about college football? At least this past decade. Michigan, inept against the mighty Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> and let's say Superman. Superman could beat everybody, but he had kryptonite. He couldn't beat kryptonite. Well, in the poker world, it's usually the same thing. If you play with the same people all the time, there are going to be those who seem like they're kryptonite to you every single time, that you can't beat them you're probably going to be a kryptonite to somebody else, and I like it when it's that way. Well, I play at a club called Rockets, and there is a woman there who is my kryptonite. Her name is Lisa. This is the way I described her last week. Let's just say she plays uniquely. She likes to get it in behind, suck out on the river, and rip out your soul. Lisa is a nemesis to many people. <laughs> uh, she's not just a nemesis to me, she's my kryptonite. I can't seem to beat the woman. Uh, she seems to spew money out to everybody else, but I can't beat her. So on this vlog, we're gonna go over two sessions, one at Line Shack, one at Rockets, and most of those hands are against the nemesis, the kryptonite, Lisa. All right, on Friday, February 7th, I played at Line Shack, I think it was one of the worst sessions that I've ever had. <laughs> I was not with it, I don't know, mentally or physically or something because I made mistake after mistake after mistake. I actually didn't lose that much money, but still just horrible mistakes. So mistake number one started on the very first hand. <laughs> Bought in for $300. They play one hand of Omaha per round. We start off with an Omaha hand. Uh, pretty much most of us bought in for $300. It's a 1-3 game in the Omaha. It's a bring in for $5. I'm in the big blind, PLO eight. I have four of clubs, four of spades, six of diamonds, king of clubs, and it is everybody limps in, so I check my option. The flop with $45 in the pot comes three of diamonds, five of diamonds, seven of clubs. I flop the nut straight, but it is a very precarious situation. The small blind bets 10. I decide I'm just going to make the call. The hijack makes it 25. The button, the small blind, and myself call. I think I probably should have blasted it right there, but I did not. The turn with 145 in the pot is the nine of clubs. Uh, the small blind bets 135. I decide, all right, well, I'm gonna blast it in there. Mistake, mistake, mistake. I rip it in for 265. The hijack calls, the button folds, and the small blind calls. The river with 940 in the pot is the queen of spades. Since we were all in, there's no betting. The small blind shows ace, deuce of diamonds for the nut low, and the hijack, six, eight for the nut high. Very, very bad. Rebuy, first hand, mistake number one. The very next hand, I rebought to $300. I'm in the small blind. King of clubs, jack of clubs, $300. There's four limpers to me. I make it $15. The cutoff is the alone who calls. The flop with 42 in the pot comes eight of clubs, eight of spades, three of clubs. I flop a pretty good flush draw. Uh, uh, I make it $20. He makes the call. The turn with 82 in the pot is the 10 of diamonds. I bet at 35, he makes the call. The river with 90 in the pot is the five of hearts. I bet $90 trying to make it look a little bit value-y. He tanks and tanks and tanks and makes the call. And he has queen of clubs, 10 of clubs. I had him absolutely dominated, but he made the call and won. And the mistake here is on the river, I should just absolutely rip it in there and make it much tougher on him. I did not. Mistake number two. So mistake number three came after I had actually played pretty well and got my stack back up to $800. I'm in the hijack with king of diamonds, 10 of diamonds. I have $800. Uh, there's three limpers I call the button, who's really not a very good player. He only has $185, bets 20. Everybody folds to me, I make the call. The flop with 53 in the pot comes king of clubs, nine of spades, four of hearts. I check, he bets 40, he only has 125 left. I'm questioning myself, should I raise? Should I continue to let him bluff it off? So against my better judgment, I 
call the bet. I know I should have ripped it in there right then. The turn with 133 in the pot is the four of spades. I continue my idea that I'm going to check him and he's going to bet it all off. I check. He instead checks behind. I'm giving him more free cards. The river with 133 in the pot is the three of spades. I check. He bets $55. <laughs> I make the call. He has ace, ten of spades for the flush. And mistake number three, horrible, horrible, horrible. So I'm very, very sick about talking about line check <laughs> because I played so badly this night. But I'll give you one more. Again, I had my stack was pretty good. I was up to $700. Uh, I'm in the plus one with king of clubs, ten of clubs. I have $700. Uh, the under the gun limps. I make it 15 The cutoff, the small blind, the big blind, and the under the gun all call. So the flop with $75 comes ace of spades, jack of diamonds, four of hearts. I have a gutter ball. It goes check, check. The under the gun makes it 25. I go ahead and I'll peel one off and I make the call. So on the turn, there's 125 in the pot and I get the bingo bongo, queen of hearts. I have Broadway. He makes it 35. I raise it up to 85. Finally, I did something right. Uh, He makes the call. The river with 295 in the pot is an eight of spades, irrelevant. He has $310 left. There's about 300 in the pot. He bets 100. I go ahead and I go all in for his other $210. He tanks and tanks and tanks and folds. Uh, And this one is not a huge mistake, but I wonder, should I have bet a smaller amount, like $200, uh, and would have gotten a call? I don't know. So all in all, with the horrible play and everything, I still only lost $150. So it was not bad for just playing ridiculously bad. And speaking of ridiculously bad, we're now going to talk about the session at Rockets and my nemesis, Lisa. Once again, in the last vlog I did, here is my description of her play. She likes to get it in behind, suck out on the river, and rip out your soul. I have pocket eights. Um, I raise the $10 pre-flop. She has position on me. She makes the call. The flop with $23 in the pot comes two, eight, nine. I flop a set of eights. Uh, she checks to me. I make it $10 and she makes the call. The turn with 43 in the pot is a jack. She checks to me. I make it $15. She raises it up to 45 and I make the call. Could she have 10 queen? Sure she could. The river with 133 in the pot is a queen. She leads out for $100. I've seen this so many times and she will do this with two pair. So I make the call and she has jack 10 for the straight. But we're just getting cooking because it gets way worse from here. Now we're going to play a PLO 8 hand. I have Ace of Spades, King of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, Eight of Spades. Not fantastic for 8, would be much better for just PLO alone. And I'm on the button with $500. There's four of us at $5. The flop with 20 in the pot comes Ace of Clubs, Queen of Diamonds, Ten of Spades, Rainbow. I flop Broadway. Lisa leads out for 15. There's a caller. I make it $80. She calls. She's the only one. So the turn with 190 in the pot is the nine of clubs. There's two clubs on board now. Uh, I make it $190. She calls and she only has $100 back. The river with 570 in the pot is a matching 10 and she puts the $100 in. Oh my gosh. I make the call and she has, this is a fantastic high-low hand. Queen of hearts, 10 of clubs, seven of spades, two spades, and her full house beats my flopped Broadway. A nemesis, kryptonite. All right, the next hand doesn't have Lisa in it, or she was in, but she didn't stay, so <laughs> maybe I have a chance this time. I have 10 jack with $350 in the big blind. A guy by the name of Brian, who's a very good player, he's under the gun, he limps for five. Uh, there's five of us at $5, in fact. The flop with $25 in the pot comes, 10, 10, 5. Hey, I flop trip 10s. That's nice. It's check, check to Brian. He makes it $10. Only I call. The turn with $45 in the pot is a 6. Uh, I check. Brian makes it $15. I make the call. The river, $75 is an 8. I check. Brian makes it $25. I raise it up to 100. 
Brian, thanks for a bit, makes the call. He has 10-9, and he was just cooler in the hand with my 10-jack, so I win a pretty decent pot on that one. All right, but let's get back to hands with Lisa again. <laughs> I have pocket twos in the small blind with $500. There's five players at $5. Uh, the flop with 25 in the pot comes nine of spades, seven of spades, two of clubs. I flop a set. Yay me. It goes check, check, check to Lisa who makes it 10. I raise it up to 30. Brian, the player in the last hand, makes the call and Lisa calls. The turn, 115 in the pot, is the jack of clubs. I make it 60. Brian folds. Lisa makes the call. The river, $235 in the pot is the jack of diamonds. I have a full house. I bet $100. She makes the call. I show my hand and she mocks. Oh my gosh, it was no kryptonite. I actually want a hand. But the hands with the nemesis are not over. Here's another one. With $600 in the big blind, I have 10 of spades, four of spades. There's five limpers. I check my option. The flop with $30 in the pot comes queen of hearts, six of spades, four of hearts. I flop one pair. It checks to Lisa. She bets $10. That's not enough to make me go away. I make the call and Brian again makes the call. The turn with 60 in the pot, 10 of clubs. Yes, I have two pair. It checks to Lisa. She makes it 20. I raise it up to $65. Brian folds and Lisa makes the call. The river with 190 in the pot, probably one of the worst cards that can come for me, is a matching six, a six of clubs. I check, she shoves it all in for $110, and I'm counterfeited. So I fold, she actually does show. Ace, queen, she beat me again, I was way ahead. Nemesis, kryptonite. Brian then got me back on the next hand. I didn't record it, but I lost $400 on a PLO eight hand to Brian when I think I had third nuts and he had nuts. So I gave it all back. All right, it's now getting to the wee hours of the morning. Lisa is long gone, but a new nemesis, a new villain shows up. It's Jamie Turner. Jamie plays loose aggressive to say the least. He's pretty much any two cards. <laughs> I'm in the big blind with pocket fives. I have $900. The end of the gun makes it $10. Jamie's in the small blind. He's having a really bad night. He's only got $105 left. He makes the call. I know he's probably any two cards here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pressure on. I raise it up to 100. The other guy folds. Jamie shoves all in for $105. I, of course, make the call because it's only $5 more. And it's Jamie. I have to be ahead. The board runs out. Nine, five, two. So I flop a set of fives. Seven, five, quad fives for Mr. Bill. Jamie gets stacked off. But we've not heard the last of Jamie yet. Jamie rebuys for, I think, $300. He's got to be in the game for $1,200, $1,300, $1,400, something like that. And within about 30 minutes, he has it up to $1,300. We are six-handed. I have ace of diamonds, four of diamonds in the big blind. I have $1,100. Jamie has $1,300. He's in the small blind. There's three people at five, including Jamie. I raise it up to 20, and only Jamie in the small blind calls. The flop with $50 in the pot comes king of hearts, four of clubs, nine of spades. He checks, I make it 25, and he makes the call. Doesn't mean anything yet. On the turn, $100 in the pot. Hey, nice card for me, ace of spades. I have two pair now. He checks, I make it $65, he makes the call. The river, a meaningless two of diamonds. He checks, I make it $90. He raises it up to $220. <laughs> Jamie could have anything here. I think I'm probably good most of the time. Uh, he may have two pair, but I don't think he's got a two pair with an ace on top. So I make the call and Jamie doesn't have two pair. He has pocket fours for a set of fours and he wins that hand. Thankfully, he didn't know I had two pair or if he'd have bet a lot more, I still probably would have called. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Hey, why don't you send me a comment or a note? Let me know who is your nemesis. What kryptonite can't you beat? Or are you a kryptonite somebody else? <laughs> Give me the stories. So you guys might have seen on social media that I did well in the Windstar President's Day main event. That will be the subject of next week's vlog. I'm really looking forward to telling you guys about that one.
And my plans are set for the World Series of Poker. I'll be playing June 2nd through the 7th. That'll be the $1,500 six max. June 17th through like the 22nd, that'll be the seniors. And then the one I'm really, really looking forward to, June 27th through like July 1st, the mystery bounty. Let's go. As always, thank you guys for watching and subscribing and pressing buttons and commenting and telling your friends about Mr. Bill. <laughs> so in the meantime, you guys have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.